Hello and welcome back to another Misconceptions video. Today I'll be talking about Intel's Turbo Boost technology and some misconceptions about it. Now the official definition of Intel Turbo Boost technology as taken from the Intel's official website is that Intel Turbo Boost technology dynamically increases the processor's frequency as needed by taking advantage of thermal and power headroom to give you a burst of speed when you need it and increase energy efficiency when you don't. From this description, it sounds like Intel Turbo Boost is merely a power saving feature where if the processor is not being used, it'll be at the base clock and if it's actually being used, it'll go up to the Turbo Boost clock, right? Well, that's actually wrong and I'm actually not sure why Intel put this description on their website as is misleading at best and just flat out wrong at worst because there is the power saving feature. It's not called Turbo Boost, it's called Intel Speed Step. And essentially what it does is it just lowers the core's clock speed if it's not being used and it goes up to the core's base clock speed if it is under 100% use. So what then is Turbo Boost technology? Well, to understand that we have to take a look at quad core and dual core CPUs. For example, the i3-6100, the Skylake dual core with hyperthreading CPU has a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz. Now, the quad-core CPUs from Intel in Skylake are i5, the 6500, for example, only has a 3.2 base clock. Now, the reason why the quad-core being more expensive and they're supposed to be better than the i3 has a lower base clock is because it has twice as many cores, meaning that it outputs twice as much heat and requires twice as much power. Now, maybe for two cores on a silicon that size, they can run up to 3.7 gigahertz and deal with the associated heat output with it. For a quad core, it may not be possible. So what Intel does instead is lower the base clocks to compensate. Now in quad core and multi-thread applications, the i5 will still beat the i3 by a significant amount. However, in poorly multi-thread applications or applications that only make use of one or two threads, the i3 actually beats the i5. Well, that's a problem and it doesn't really make sense. So Intel finds a way essentially for the i5 to compete with the i3 in terms of poorly multi-thread applications. And that solution is Turbo Boost. Essentially what Turbo Boost does is in a quad core or a higher core chip, when all cores are not being used, or for example, when only one or two cores are being used, the cores that are not being used will be throttled down and the cores that are being used will be boosted up dynamically to achieve better single or dual core performance on a multi-core chip. And this is why the i5-6500, for example, can turbo boost up to 3.6 gigahertz, very close to the 3.7 from the i3, when it only one core is being used. When two cores are being used, it can only turbo boost up to 3.5 gigahertz. When three cores are being used, it can turbo boost up to 3.4. And when all four cores are being used, it turbo boosts up to 3.3 if power uh, is not an issue, basically. Now, what does this mean? Why is this important? When you're buying a CPU, for example, a lot of people look at the turbo boost clock or the boost clock, for example, as a measure of that CPU's performance. In reality though, the base clock is much more important value than the boost clock when it comes to performance, just because if you're buying, for example, a quad core chip, most of the applications you're gonna be doing nowadays are very, very well multi-threaded for at least four threads. Gaming, for example, most AAA titles released this year and pretty much all AAA titles released within the past month require four cores and make use of four cores very, very well. So there is no situation where a two core higher clock speed chip is gonna outperform a four core at a slightly lower clock speed chip. To give you an example of why this is important and why you should keep this in mind is let's say you're debating on which i5 chip to buy. You have the i5-6400, you have the i5-6500, and you have the i5-6600. Now the 6400 has a base clock of 2.7 gigahertz and a boost clock of 3.3 gigahertz. The 6500 has a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz and a boost clock of 3.6 gigahertz. And the 6600 has a boost clock of 3.9 gigahertz, but a base clock of only 3.3 gigahertz. Now, the i5-6500 is 10% more expensive than the 6400. The 6600 is approximately 10% more than the 6500. If we take a look at only the boost clock, it seems like the 6400 makes sense because its boost clock is about 10% slower than the 6500 and it's a price 10% cheaper. Whereas the 6600's boost clock is about 10% more than the 6500 and is priced 10% more expensive. On the other hand, if we take a look at the base clock, which I said was the more important one, the 6500 actually has best value because its base clock is 3.2 gigahertz, 
of full 0.5 gigahertz higher than the 6400, which is 15% higher and it costs only 10% more. And it's only 0.1 gigahertz less than the 6600, which is about 3% lower and it costs 10% less. So from base clock perspective, the i5-6500 is the best value for the dollar if you're trying to get an i5 chip. And that sums up this video about Intel Turbo Boost. It's a common misconception. I know I had it too when I first heard about it. When I first read about Turbo Boost, I thought it was also a power saving feature. So it's, it's a pretty common misconception, I feel. And hopefully this cleared it up. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment and make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.